what I like to do when I tell a story through photographs is um, I take a series of photos and today I just want to share one of those examples with you. So I'm going to be going through this book right here with you and just kind of talk about the, uh, the reason I took these shots and the thought behind them. And before we get started, make sure to like the video, subscribe if you're not already. And I want to thank all of you guys who have already been so supportive of the page. We've really built a fun community out here. So um, let's keep it going. So this book actually means a lot to me. This is uh, the story of our journey from finding out we're pregnant all the way until um, our baby was born. As soon as we found out, I, I told myself, I wanna document this. Now, some of you out there might still be looking for your story or trying to come up with an idea for a story to tell through photographs, and you'll get there. This one was an obvious choice when the occasion arrives because it's just, it's something that people do. So let's just go through the book real quick and then I'll uh, give you some tips on some ideas and things to think of while you're going through your documenting or your storytelling. All right, just gonna go through these. So this was a little bit after we found out uh, these first couple of pages. And I wanted this to be the beginning of the story when I was creating the book, because obviously it's the sonogram and uh, us just celebrating. So something I decided early on was that I was going to create a book for these photos and that I wanted to do it in black and white. Now, it's funny because these photos in color look really good um, because of because it's fall and there's just there's yellow and all red all over the place. But there's a saying in you know the video community, sometimes you just gotta leave your darlings on the cutting room floor. So I do still have the photos in color and I do enjoy them. But for this book, I knew that I wanted the whole thing to be in black and white. So I had to have these to match. Uh, I think they still came out pretty good. So as I was shooting all of the photos that I knew I wanted to take documenting this whole journey, I thought about the contrast and how it was gonna look in black and white. So this next page is, um, it's actually time-wise, it's scattered. These aren't, these weren't taken all like chronologically. So I grouped these photos together because it was all shots of us kind of preparing. So these ended up being grouped together. You know, you see me uh, putting the crib together, putting her changing table together. I got a shot of her on the floor organizing all of the part, the pieces. We got a lot of clothes as gifts from friends and some hand-me-downs and things like that from our friends in Boston. And uh, this is a shot of Aaron organizing all that stuff. Now, I organized the next page the way I did because, you know, they're, they're belly shots and I wanted to kind of show the progression through the year. You can tell it's Christmas time here, it's winter. Um, and then there's, you know, Aaron farther along, kind of just everyday life where we're going for a walk, getting a little nicer out in this photo. And it continues here. You know, these are my nephews. And this was, this was probably right before, you know, a month before she was born. We had a little photo shoot, same type of thing, you know, just progression through the year. And then this is the day we went for our um, sonogram. The only thing Erin wanted for her birthday was a 3D ultrasound so that she could see her face. And I will admit, this was awesome. This was a, this was a really fun thing to do. The nurse that was attending to us was super excited for us. Actually, because of COVID, this was the first time I was actually able to be in a room for a sonogram. At the doctor's office, I wasn't allowed to go in. This was a private office that allowed me to come in with a mask on. So this is Aaron's baby shower. We did have uh, a small gathering hosted by one of our good friends, um, and she did an awesome job kind of putting it together for us. Now these, I think this, I think this page is a little obvious, right? So we decided we were gonna take the same photo in the same spot. This is a more common thing. A lot of people do this. I like putting them all together and seeing them on one page, and it was, it was pretty cool. And we started at week 12. Apparently, that's like when you're supposed to start telling people. I don't know. All right, so this is it. This is when we first got to the hospital. Aaron's water broke. Something that I always thought that was because of TV probably is that when your water breaks, it's like an emergency. Apparently you still have some time. So uh, we, we went home, got our stuff and then went to the hospital, which is close to the house. So no big deal. We got to the hospital. We still had to wait a little bit uh, for a room to open up because apparently everyone was having babies that day. This was kind of like our waiting area right here uh, while we were waiting for a room to open up. And then this is, I think, a little self-explanatory. So something that I knew I wanted to do was be present and take everything in and be helpful. 
I didn't want to miss the moment, but I definitely wanted to document it for us to have in the future. And that's that's a little hard to balance in this kind of this specific situation. I think I did I did a pretty good job. I remember it very clearly the first moment of our daughter being in this world. I think when it comes to a photo story or documenting a thing, you don't have to take a thousand photos at one for every single second. And the reason for that is because I, I took this shot. You can kind of see the expression on her face and you can see the doctors and, and the nurses in the background. And this really does tell the story of what's happening in that moment. Once I took that photo, I knew that I could be present for the rest of it. I didn't have to keep snapping away. After the umbilical cord was cut, I, I picked my camera back up. And this is something I thought of ahead of time. I wanted to get shots of the first moments that my wife got to meet our new daughter. And so that's what this is. This is kind of the series of her crying and then the skin to skin here. This shot I really like. that's why I made it the full page. This was Aaron starting to try to recover, just her hand kind of touching Aaron. So I took all of these photos with a 50 millimeter 1.2. I did not switch lenses the whole time we were there. 50 millimeters is one of my favorite focal lengths. I, I do like the 35 because I think that's what our eyes naturally see, but the 50 millimeter is great. And then, so if you can get all the way down to F 1.2, you're gonna get some really clean shots. And then these shots are just tying things up, you know, just uh, them weighing her for the first time and measuring her. And I was able to get a shot of, of them putting her down near the machine. And then these two, obviously, just us holding her, you know, she's looking at her mom. We were only in the hospital for like a day. And this is her sleeping as an infant, man. They sleep a lot. Okay, so a couple of things to note that I want to definitely talk to you guys about. So I decided early on that the style I wanted to do this story in was going to be an environmental portraiture type situation. So there was always a subject, there was always um, there was always something that I was focused on, but I took the shots more wide out so that I could establish the setting. I think that establishing the setting in a story is one of the most important things. You think about stories like a Star Wars or a Harry Potter. There's a huge lore, there's uh, there's a universe behind it so you can tell stories within that universe. So yeah, I did take some detailed shots and some subject focused shots, but I always made sure to take a wide establishing shot. If you just only take detailed shots and that's what you're doing or portraits, then uh, I mean, they might look good and you'll make a beautiful book but it's not establishing a story. That's an important thing to keep in mind when you're when you're documenting is to establish the scene. So this page is a good example, I think, um, of setting your scene and then getting a detail. So I have this shot of Aaron in our apartment going through a bunch of clothes and she's looking at one of the onesies. And then the second shot is a more detailed shot. It's still not crazy tight in, but the detail of the graphic on the onesie is, is prevalent. And if I had just taken this shot of her holding it, you wouldn't know what we were doing, right? You wouldn't know that we were organizing clothes. We had folded a bunch of them, we're laying them out. So this goes from environment setting to a detailed shot. Another really good example of this is in the hospital. I did think through this because I wanted to tell this story, right? We have a wider shot of the room, her kind of getting ready in the room. We have a detailed shot of her, of the heartbeat, the baby's heartbeat. So, cause we're monitoring that. There's a detailed shot of the expression on her face and timing the contractions. Um, and then we go back out. I, I, I reset the scene cause this is the labor part of it. So you see the, you see the room, you see the doctors, and then it slowly goes more detailed and more detailed. So the doctor handing the, our daughter to Aaron, the, the baby crying, the baby laying on, on, and I'm just slowly getting more detailed as I go in. And then I get a close up of her face laying on Aaron's chest, and then it, like a very detailed shot of the baby's hand. So that's what I mean by establishing the setting and then also getting the details. So this is just one example of how you can tell a story through your photography. I would love to hear your projects and things you're working on in the comments. So if you're working on something like this or you're documenting a specific story right now, then leave it in the comments and, and ask any questions you have. Or if you have any questions or anything that you'd like to hear more of or hear me talk about more of, then leave that in the comments as well. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Now go out there and make something good.
He's like, all right. 